Well, he had all oh. the opportunity. Oh. I'm jammed. Oh. It happens. You're down. So, I've been an avid DayZ gamer for quite a few years. I started with the Dharma 2 DayZ mod and I fell in love with the game's idea of post-apocalyptic zombie survival. When these events standalone in 2013 on Steam Early Access, from that point on, I had accumulated more than 1700 hours on the game, although back then I wouldn't have even dared to call it a video game, with how much content it had and at what quality it was. I started my content creation journey with Daisy as well, so this game definitely has a spot in my heart. Daisy Standalone left Early Access in 2018, and from that point on, the game has received numerous updates that have introduced new content bug fixes and stuff like that. In 2019, we received a new paid DLC called Livonia, which was basically just a new map for everyone to play on, and we also saw how the modding community of DayZ has been able to keep the game afloat, at least on the PC platform, for all these years. Thanks to them, almost everyone can find a server to their liking and enjoy the game. On October 15th, 2024, DayZ is going to receive another DLC called DayZ Frostline which is going to be available on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Let's talk if it's worth spending your hard-earned money to get it. As soon as I heard that lots of the biggest DZ content creators are being flown out to the Czech Republic, where Bohemia Interactive is based, for a grand reveal of something new and cool for DZ, I got immediately excited. Unfortunately, when that reveal happened, my excitement was flushed down the toilet. They introduced a new map called Sahal, a few new animals and a few new items fit for that map. That's basically it. They will introduce a few new mechanics into the game together with the DLC, but it will not be a part of it. How cold works, frozen and hot food and more stuff is coming on October 15th as well. And to my understanding, the new mechanics update will be distributed to all DZ players, even if they don't have the DLC. Thanks to Bohemia Interactive and the team working on DZ, I was able to play the Frostline DLC early together with tons of other content creators in an exclusive streamer event that DZ was hosting. So I booted up Frostline and at a first glance, everything looks great. The map is gorgeous, everything seems to be working, servers are holding up. I thought great and continue playing. After playing for an hour or something, I noticed some things about the DLC that made me really disappointed. First of all, the map itself. It just feels empty. The rule that other great video game apps follow is that there should be some sort of point of interest every 5 minutes of a player walking in any direction. For example, if I'm in the coastal town and I walk west, in 5 minutes I should reach another town. If I walk south, I should reach a castle, and so on. This is how good maps should be built. In Frostline though, it seems that this rule was avoided. At one point, I walked in the same direction for about 10-20 to 20 minutes, and all I saw in that moment was trees, trees, and more trees. Okay, maybe an open field here and there too. Having these prolonged times of just running, running and more running can bore you really quickly into quitting the game. Maybe that's why some players call DZ a running simulator. For some reason, it is also super hard to run into other players on this map too. On the official test servers, we are at 45 players per server. Maybe this is only a player count issue and can easily be changed once the map is going to fall into the hands of community server admins, where they will be able to increase the player count. Or maybe this is entirely the spawn location issue where players are just spread too broadly. Either way, I believe all of this can be easily fixed in the future either by the devs themselves or by the community. But when I played the game first, I didn't meet a single person for 3 hours. That says something. Secondly, what is going on with the terrain textures? Those definitely look like they were created back in 2010 or something. Another Bohemia game, called Armory Forger, doesn't look as bad during its loading phase when the game is installed on my hard drive, and that thing takes ages to load anything. Frostline map textures on the other hand just always look bad. Take a look at the snow. Why is it in squares? Shouldn't those texture corners be rounded up for a more natural look? And the sad thing is that you can spot this happening everywhere in the areas where snow meets land. I also saw a clip on Twitter from Sedamore, who is a Daisy streamer, where he showed a building in the game where in the same room the same exact picture frame was used twice. Either the people living there love that picture more than they should, or someone from Daisy Quality Assurance team said, nah, good enough. 
Such small details really show how much of the map creative process was overlooked for some reason. Honestly, I don't understand how the project leads gave a green light for everyone to see the new map through content creators. These streamers are playing it now daily due to that event I mentioned earlier, and the average viewership on Twitch for the game is around 10,000 viewers. That's 10,000 pairs of eyes every day that can see all of these flaws. I really hope that at least the detail issues, like snow squares and the duplicated items used too frequently in certain areas, like those picture frames, are going to be fixed when the DLC drops on the 15th of October. I would also love that they would add more simple things you could find and explore during your travels on the map, like hunting stands, castles, some ruins, maybe summer camps, or other more interesting things than just trees. Don't get me wrong, the map is not horrible, it just could be way better than it is. It does have interesting things in it, like a bunker, apparently some special captain zombies that we haven't seen before, items that lead to more items, and just things in general that I myself haven't discovered yet, but I heard about from other content creators. But I guess that's good, we don't want spoilers, do we? From what I experienced myself and saw through the eyes of other streamers, my understanding is that developers focus more on the end game map content as they call it, but not on the journey to it itself. How many people that played Namals have been able to reach Lantia, the end game of that map? To my knowledge, not the majority. In 1700 hours of me playing DZ, I only reached Lantia once, and just because I got lucky. The next questionable thing is that the items and some of the mechanics being introduced into the game have already been in it, at least for PC players, as mods. I guess we can give a slip for the mechanics, since those are going to be handed out to everyone for free, hopefully. Some of the items, or a variation of them, on the other hand, have been previously seen in the form of mods, especially under the mask map community servers. One of these examples is the Wolf Headdress. I was running with that back on the mask two years ago. Now they made their own version of the Wolf Headdress and decided to charge everyone for it. I am not a modder myself, but if I were in their shoes, I would feel like something was stolen from me. Modders have been keeping DZ alive for a very long time, and in my opinion, this is not how they should be repaid. I know we, the players of DZ, always ask the developers to implement stuff like that from the mods into their official game so everyone, even players on the consoles, could experience it. But if we never meant to also charge us that much money for an idea that was basically copy and pasted. On the other hand, one of the new mechanics that they really improved and now is super immersive is the fishing. Have a look at it yourself. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I can call that a real improvement. Maybe a change? In my opinion, Daisy Frostline still has a way to go to justify its price tag. 27 bucks, or euros, depending on where you are, is a lot of money for a DLC. The amount of new content and the quality of it definitely falls short. You know what doesn't cost anything though? Hitting that sub and like buttons below the video so you wouldn't miss any of my future uploads. Now let's just make a comparison from the perspective of delivered content between two DLCs, Phantom Liberty for Cyberpunk 2077 and Frostline for DayZ. Phantom Liberty is priced at 30 bucks, Frostline at 27, just a $3 difference. Phantom Liberty introduces a totally new storyline into Cyberpunk, a new map, tons of new main and side quests for the player, tons of new cars, tons of new weapons, improved game mechanics, and so on. And bear in mind that the quality of all that content for Phantom Liberty DLC is also amazing. What do we get with Frostline that we will have to pay for? A new half-baked map with the ability to use new implemented game mechanics, a few new items that were previously seen as mods on PC, some new wildlife in the game, and the boat. What do you think is the overall value for money between these two? But yeah, but Cyberpunk is a game we play once and never play again, and on DZ you can spend thousands of hours and still enjoy it. It is a very bad view, since you are the person that decides how many hours to put into a certain game. There are tons of people that do have thousands of hours in Cyberpunk, just like there are people that have thousands of hours in DayZ. The price you pay for a game or a DLC should not be set by the hours players are going to put into the game, but by the amount of content the product delivers. There are also tons of full games that you could buy for such a price, or at least a similar one. There's one even from the same developer. Armory Forger, also developed by Bohemia Interactive, is priced at 30 bucks, also just $3 more than Frostline. That game was technically meant only to be a showcase of what's to come for Arma 4, but already works and looks better than DayZ. 
The modding possibilities on it are just as crazy as in DayZ, but it allows the Xbox players to experience all of those mods too, because there's crossplay available for all servers. To summarize, I would recommend holding off on buying Frostline DLC for a DZ, or at least wait for a discount on it until it's around $10 to $15. The product definitely still has a way to go until it is going to be worth all of its price tag. I'm not saying the DLC is horrible though, and everyone should definitely avoid it, no. The foundation is there, and maybe if the devs continue improving it, adding new features into the DLC, and fix all of those details that they looked over before, maybe at some point I will be able to say that yes, Frostline is definitely worth those 27 bucks. For now though, I'm afraid I can't say that. If you're a huge DZ fan and can't think of anything better to spend your money on, then sure, go ahead, pay the full price. It's your money after all, you will be supporting the DZ developers, and who am I to tell you to do otherwise? I also must admit that this DLC is definitely aimed more at the console DZ players. People there have been wandering around Charnaros and Livonia only for years now. So getting a new map for them together with the mechanics previously seen only on PC is huge. I can understand why the console side of DZ gamers would be more excited. Frostline for PC though is just more of what we kind of already had, just in a bit of a different way that still feels very familiar. I don't know if that makes sense. I also might be totally wrong and everything is going to be changed and fixed on October 15th when it releases officially, but I guess time will tell. What are your thoughts on Daisy Frostline? Do you agree with my criticism of the DLC? Express your excitement or disappointment down in the comment section below and let me know if you will be picking it up straight away, avoid it in general or wait for a sale. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.